Good morning, welcome. Uh, we are Greater Nanticoke Area. We will be presenting on reinforcing and refreshing students and staff. My name is Julie Perhax. I am an elementary school counselor. I work in two buildings, uh, so I'm K to five. Our Kennedy Ch Early Childhood Center is K to two. Uh, I have approximately 1,100 students, a large caseload. Um, I also uh, am on our SAP board for uh, the Pennsylvania uh, Student Assistance Program and um, working hard with students and teachers and families and everybody to help uh, students to follow rules and have everybody make sure everyone has a good school year. So I'm going to turn it over to my co-presenters to introduce themselves real quick. Hi, my name is Susan DeSinti. I'm a kindergarten teacher. I've been doing it at Kennedy Early Childhood Center. Um, for the last 18 years I've been in kindergarten. I was in different classrooms before that. Um, a lot of experience with behaviors and PBIS kind of was one of the big implementations that we used at our school that helped out with some of the issues that we were seeing. Even though we were uh, younger children, kindergarten, preschool, first and second grade, we still see behaviors and we always need refreshers, not only for ourselves, we need it for the kids, we need it for the staff. Um, right around now, after Halloween, I'm sure you're all ready to be refreshed. Um, I know I am and I know there's a lot of pressures on all of us because, you know, upcoming events that are coming with counseling and other kind of meeting, meeting the teachers and meeting the families, a lot of us are ready to be refreshed and renewed. So we're going to talk to you about all of that in our program <laughs> after Mrs. Duda. <laughs> There's a lot for me to say. Um, I'm Leanne Duda. I'm a second grade teacher at our, our school district. Um, I, I've been doing it. I've been the coach there for eight years. I'm the smart aleck of the group. So you'll often hear me yelling out because I can't control <laughs> myself. Um, I'm a big into uh, SEL. And with us having a low poverty area, you know, like she was saying, our district gets very um, overwhelmed. And we have a lot to keep our staff and our students happy. So we thought it would be a good idea to give you some kind of refresher. So thanks for having us and coming to our, our presentation. OK, so welcome to our school, uh, the Kennedy Early Childhood Center. The Nanticoke School District uh, is a small district. We have about 2,200 students. We're all on one campus, which is a bit unique. We used to have another. Uh, school situated on another campus, and then they decided to consolidate us, um, which resulted in not quite enough space, not really enough bathrooms or storage, but, you know, it's what, what the greater <laughs> um, decided would be good, and um, it is convenient to have everybody all on, on one space. Uh, at one point, it said that we were in the Guinness Book of World Records because you could go from K to college all on one street within about one mile. We do have um, Luzerne County Community College uh, right down the street from us as well. Uh, so we are located in Luzerne County. Um, the, our closest big city is Wilkes-Barre. Our, our school district is about 75% economically disadvantaged, and we have probably about 20 to maybe 22% that have um, IEPs or 504s. We have four school counselors for the district, two high school, a middle school, and myself for the elementary, two psycho school psychologists, five school resource officers, three more were just hired this year, two more this year. Um, we also have an SBBH program, um, which is a large one. We have seven BHTs and three MHPs, but they're not usually fully staffed, so we're on a wait list for like two years. Um, we also have outpatient services provided by one of the local mental health agencies in our school. Um, so that's another nice asset that we have. So that just gives you a kind of a snapshot of what we're working with um, in our district. So positive behavior at Kennedy Early Childhood Center. We do the Principals 200 Club. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar that was the model when we started positive behavior in, in 2000 and 2007, 2008, 2009, somewhere in there. Um, working in both buildings, it's, it's kind of been interesting 
because we started PBIS in one building in 2007 and the other one in 2009. Um, and we have used both the Principles 200 Club and a star kind of token economy um, in, in the building that we started in 2007, which was our off-campus building that was later incorporated into Kennedy Early Childhood Center. Currently, our positive behavior program uh, uses both the Principles 200 Club, Golden Tickets, uh, and uh, STARS uh, as a token economy. Most of our staff has moved over to using points through Class Dojo, but a couple of our teachers still do give physical STARS um, as well. So we kind of have two, two systems running concurrently, but it's what works best for our students, especially the young ones with the uh, immediate positive reinforcement. Our rules are the three Bs, be safe, be caring, be responsible. And um, students can earn um, a golden ticket or the stars, do dojo points. And uh, if a whole class is being safe, caring, and responsible, they can earn that class golden ticket. So that's kind of a picture of our PBIS. Yeah, please. Um, just a little bit more on the tickets. The smaller ticket you see on the right is given to individual students caught throughout the school. And it could be given by any staff member. The kids look forward to grabbing that golden ticket because then they go down to the office and get a little treat, a little prize. But the larger ticket you see on there is a class golden ticket, which is really a big deal to them. But any of the classes that get caught following any of the three ways to be, they get to put that on, well, the teachers put it on the outside of the classroom. We're competitive. And <laughs> yeah, some, uh, when the kids see that another class, such as Mrs. Duda's, they might have 10 or 12. I don't know how many of you have. Last year, thank she, you. Yeah. <laughs> so she kind of has competition, and other classrooms see that hanging outside in the hall, and then, you know, then they know they can, they're going to work harder. The group prizes or the class prizes are really great. Um, we've come up with Pajama Day. You want to hop in there? Um, what, movie. The kids, the kids to choose. The kids get to choose. Their they do camp, I do camping parties with them where we shut off the lights and we have them bring in a blanket and they can lay underneath and they can read a book and they have a flashlight and we can do the whole day that way. We do what? Um, popcorn and movie. There's pajama day. Um, I, we do bring in, bring in a toy in my class, yep. which they, you Shut know, for out. recess time, mm -hmm. not to keep out the whole time, but it is something, especially after Christmas, it's a big deal in kindergarten. So those are like really great ways to reinforce them. But again, sometimes that goes lax after, you know, so many, maybe it, it seems like the same kids are getting it and everybody's going, okay, well, what else can we do? So even, I mean, do you look for different ways to motivate your kids? I mean, how many of you sit and go, I don't know what I'm going to do uh, to get them to earn this prize or I'm going to, I look for ways or different ways that we, I can reward them. Um, so class prizes, I look to Mrs. Duda and say, what did you do with your class because we've done movies, we've done the pajamas, what else could the we do? Pet. Uh, uh, <laughs> class pet. Yeah, and then all of that, uh, you know, we reinforce one another. So if any of you come up with some great ideas, think about We're it. Like ears. we'd love to hear something like uh, that a class would like to work for as one of those reward um, prizes. Just think about it and maybe later on when we do question and answers, you can, you can give us some of those ideas. Back to you, John. Okay, so are you ready to reinforce and refresh your PBIS program? I hope so. Um, looking uh, out at you guys, out at our audience, um, I'm wondering uh, how many of you are in a, working in a setting where your PBIS program is less than three years that you've been doing it? Okay, how many um, less than six years? All right, less than 10 years? Okay, all right. Um, how many of you are teachers? Okay. <laughs> how many are school counselors? Uh, school psych? Principals? Um, hmm, I don't know, what other? Nurses? <laughs> no, no all nurses? Coaches? Yes, okay, all right, great. Well, welcome. 
and um, hopefully we can uh, give you some good ideas here. So our objectives are to be able to describe different ways to reinforce and reteach school-wide PBIS expectations, um, to describe how to keep staff feeling positive and renewed throughout the school year, and to identify ways to implement creative fundraising efforts. So let's get started. Okay, so reinforcing and reteaching expectations with students. I'm sure a lot of this is familiar and um, similar to what you guys are doing for your schools. Uh, a yearly kickoff in September. We try and make it fun and interesting for the kids. Over the years, we've invited in different like mascots. We've we had Red Robin, um, the uh, the yep, the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins, the farm team from uh, for Pittsburgh Pens. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is bear country, yes. Uh, and um, But it seems like the biggest stars are the, the ones that are in our high school chorus and, or band and cheerleaders. So they're the ones that we invite back year after year <laughs> for the kickoff because they're the ones the kids at the elementary level get the most excited about. Uh, the cheerleaders, they get really into it. They have their own signs made for be safe, be caring, be responsible. And, um, you know, they trot them out every time and have their own cheers uh, with that. Um, so it's wonderful that they're so supportive, the cheerleading coach and the cheerleaders themselves. Yes, they hang them in our halls uh, throughout the school. Um, sometimes they'll do some signs right before school starts to get kids excited and then some of the uh, incorporating our, our rules as well. Of course, we're teaching the cool tools, signing up, and teaching them in each location uh, throughout, throughout the uh, first week of school. You ladies are both amazing with that. I don't know if you have anything you want to add about that. Right at the beginning of the year, um, we take the kids to each areas to follow the rules, whether it's in the classroom, of course, they're going to start there. But then we take them into the bathrooms. We take them into the cafeteria, into the hallways, so we can have examples of what it should look like so they know what the expectation is. Um, and we do model non-examples um, for the kids. Sometimes we get carried away. But um, it, it gives them a better idea of how they should be acting, especially in areas that sometimes we aren't always the people that are present there, like in the cafeteria or in the bathroom. So it is a great way. And the kickoff, the kids, like Ms. Perhack said, we absolutely love seeing those cheerleaders because a lot of the time the cheerleaders and football players are the kids siblings so it's a big deal I mean and it's inexpensive it's not going to cost you anything and if you can get somebody that you know they'll be looking forward to seeing that's really a big motivator as well we've also used the drama club oh correct yeah correct drama yeah. club has come in and acted out um, some of the ways that they should follow the rules and some of the ways the non-examples as well so that's another area that it's not going to cost you anything, that it's easy to access because it's going to be people right in your district. Yes, the drama club that, that um, you know, was really great um, when we have used them, uh, again, because the kids are identifying with them. Can I give them advice? Yes. Do not have your drama club throw food. <laughs> Because it taught kindergarten, first and second, hey, we could throw food in the cafeteria. Oh, no. So don't incorporate that. <laughs> yeah, th that was something where, uh, you know, we learned that we had to give them more of a structured uh, ideas of, of what would be examples and non-examples because the, the high school kids really did have too much fun with the non-examples and uh, definitely taught our kids <laughs> Some things that we wish they didn't. So, uh, you'll you'll hear there are certainly some pitfalls we've encountered throughout <laughs> throughout the PBIS journey that we've been doing so far. Uh, but that that was one of them for sure. Uh, something else that we do to refresh, uh, because we utilize our golden tickets, is we have done the Willy Wonka golden ticket song in music class. Um, and related that to the rules, and um, you know that's something fun that the kids enjoy as well. 
Um, and of course, refreshers in January, there's a lot of different things that we're doing to refresh our program. And I'm sure you guys are doing the same. So, um, we, <laughs> there's photos of our, of our cheerleaders, they do in the GNA. Uh, they really are enthusiastic with su supporting the rules, um, which goes a long way to uh, influence our young ones. Um, we have a quick video to show you of one of our teachers that she developed uh, over COVID. Um, she did a lot of fun videos with the students, um, as I'm sure you all did as well, but we thought we'd share just this quick one. Hi, boys and girls. I am here with my good friend, So Becky has done a lot of uh, a really cute, um, a lot of cute things throughout the school year um, and throughout the, the many years, please. Does anybody know where, how much the puppets are upstairs? We think we have to take one back for her. <laughs> you can tell me if you uh, So yeah, she, she's great with the puppets and um, that's what I'm gonna show you next. She actually developed this adorable book um, oops, sorry. Let's uh, do that. Um, and so it's the three B's, be safe, be caring, be responsible of Kennedy Early Childhood with Achu Piggy. Um, and she's got a whole book that I have um, somewhere, yep, in there somewhere, uh, that if you guys want to check it out. But uh, do, do you want to explain? Because it's so cute with the, um, the sight words and everything. She wanted to reinforce the three ways to be in our district with her class in particular. Um, not that she was having a big problem with them, but the kids loved the puppets so much that was one way to incorporate them. And she started with this book that she just began. It's not a bound book, it's just a flip book, using photographs of the pig throughout the school day. And she incorporated sight words so the kids can read it easily. And she has it readily available in her story corner. And it's gotten so popular in her classroom um, that they're asking for more books to be produced so they can use them. So again, it's not a cost to her at all, um, aside from the puppets, but she's really made that you know, really a fun way for the kids to understand the, the rules. And they're silly, the puppets are silly, even though they, she's no ventriloquist, trust me. But when you put a, something on your hand and start talking to these primary kids, even up to second grade, they, they talk to it as if it's you know a real person. So it does have an impact on the kids and they really are very responsive to these characters that she has. Um, she stuck with them through COVID and it was really a great way to still incorporate PBIS um, when we were virtual. So it really was a wonderful thing that she did. She's, she to me has a calling somewhere else, but um, she certainly did a great job with that. And it does incorporate the curriculum into it as well um, with sight words and fluency reading. So it's just another way, you know, to, to keep the kids up to date on those three ways to be in our district. Oh, it is being passed around if you'd like to take a look at it. Yes, she is remarkably creative and the book is so adorable and I love that the kids all want to read it, um, you know, frequently in the classroom and uh, in the story corner. Okay, so now we want to hear from you. Um, if you can, we're going to give you about two minutes to turn and talk about how you are re reinforcing and re refreshing your PBIS program in your districts, and then we'll ask you to share out real quick. So turn and talk to your neighbor. We'll give you just uh, just about two minutes. <laughs> I'm looking forward to hearing about uh, any quick input that people have about how they are reinforcing and refreshing their PBIS program? Anybody want to share? 
How are you uh, reinforcing and refreshing? Yes? Thank you for sharing. So moving, uh, moving the assembly to bef the Wednesday before school. <laughs> Very true. Okay, great. And we'll probably be asking to hear from more of you uh, towards the end. Okay, so renewing students. There's a lot of things that we do to renew students, and um, later on we'll talk about how to pay for it. But um, one, of, one of the things that we were most excited for this past school year was that we bought every student K-2, to almost 600 of them, um, Christmas gloves. Uh, and that was uh, through one of our PBIS fundraisers that we did. Um, we do so many fun things, including the, the Easter egg hunt, and let's see, the Honor Society, I think, helps uh, with that. Um, Silver Spoon in the cafeteria. Um, yes, why don't you tell us? In the, in the cafeteria, as a way to reward the classes for their good behavior, um, there's quite a large group in the cafeteria, as everybody's school is like that. Um, we have, I believe, six or seven classes at a time there, and it gets hard to control with the staff having to monitor it. So as an incentive for the kids, we got these very large spoons and forks, no knives, um, but we, we, you probably used to see them in people's homes, I think they're back now, that they would hang on the wall in the kitchen. Home Goods, Home Goods has them, right. So you, we spray paint them um, gold, silver, and we're using silver, um, but we spray paint them, and the class that has the best behavior for that day, each day, I think they get a star. Well, that's where I was alluding to. Each day, they get a little star next to the teacher's name, and the class gets most of stars for the week, earns the silver spoon, which also gives them a class prize. And the principal usually is the one that does the prize, because we're always thinking of things to do with them all the time. The principal will come around with candy, she may come around with a treat for them, she may give them extra recess, it just all depends on what she feels like that week. Right, yep. and the spoon is displayed outside of the classroom um, to show the rest of the kids. Again, you know, it's that little carrot dangling in front of their face. Oh, we walk by and we see that class got a silver spoon, or they got, you know, that large golden ticket. cafeteria we have a whiteboard and on the whiteboard is all the classes under each grade so what they do is she at the end of they know enough when she shuts the lights off that they all have to get quiet yeah they all get quiet and then they'll talk about how whoever won the star and why they won it because they were sitting no one got out of their seat no one was yelling no throwing food usually and then what they do is then everybody cheers whoever gets it and then the rest of us, even including the teachers, when we come out, we congratulate the class that got it. A lot of us, like me, of course, I have to be the brat of the thing. I'm like, oh, yeah, right, okay, sure, yeah, yeah, I don't want to hear you got it. But we try to make it so that we were always in competition with one another in a fun way, so that, that they know that it's a big deal even for us as the teachers to be the one that has the silver spoon at the end or the silver fork at the end. So we do things like that. But there's a running total. You'll see all of our names. And then this way, it's a visual for them as well. Yes, so that's how we keep track of, of um, who's in the lead. 
or uh, who has earned those, those stars. Um, yes, uh, you have a question? Um, no, I just wanted to say that we, we did something similar last year, and it, it, we felt like with our staff, I think you have to know who's going to implement it or not, what she was sort of saying. So this year we sort of did something I feel like is a little easier for our school, so I think if that's working for your school, that's what we tried to do last year. This year we just gave our lunch assistance uh, tickets that we use for the school normally, and the lunch room has its own bin, yeah. school-wide <coughs> lunchroom bin, and when that fills up, they earn all the lunches get, a, a, you know, music, uh, so and so. So it's just made it easier to manage. Um, so that's just a suggestion. We, we do that too. Do you? <laughs> I just we try, try we to do this yeah. because it's not just our way. We want to share all yeah. different ideas so everybody can take. Well, and I feel back. like you can like well, the one we had last year. We had like somebody drew all kinds of different food. It was fantastic. But if the people in the lunchroom won't. Yeah. do it, then right. you, yeah. it doesn't matter how good it is. So this one's working. It's easier for the ladies to give a ticket. So that's just what we have to work with. And each school has to figure out which yes. what works for them depending on their building, their staff, their students, um, absolutely. So thank you for sharing that um, you, you guys sort of do your own cafeteria uh, system where you put everything in into to the jar. That's great. The kids were losing. I mean, they have to take the tickets away with them losing losing them can be a big deal for sure uh, something else that we did around the holidays was the candy cane uh, incentive again just uh, some of those little candy canes uh, we had a lot of them for uh, our staff in the cafeteria and um, we used those as a re uh, you know a tangible reinforcer uh, the golden trash can was one for um, cleanliness that uh, one of our principals uh, invented. Um, she, or, decided, well. <laughs> she decided that we wanted an incentive because the kids were making a mess. We have breakfast in our room, so for us it's always the, the rooms are a mess and the cleaning staff has to deal with it at the end of the day. So what we, she would do is we would, they would go around at the end of the day and they would check each classroom and whoever won they would put a golden trash can over by the principal's door and then each day we do the same thing as the incentive like we did in the cafeteria. It was something for them to get involved in cleaning up their mess other than just throwing it on the floor like they're used to. Uh, Texas Roadhouse gift certificates. Uh, we did an end of the year gift again for each student um, for, with a, a chalk and sunglasses and um, we do all kinds of pizza parties and dessert parties and things like that. We have a prize cart. Oh, we had a fun 100 day of school celebration. I don't know if you want to talk about that, Sue. Yeah, the glasses and the um, I'm pretty sure that most schools, I don't know, do you still sell, how many of you still celebrate the 100th day? Yeah, lots of you do. And in the primary, I think, is a, a big, it's a big deal. Um, what we did is put together a little, you could call it a little party, by buying those sticks, straight stick pretzels and then two cookies to make the 100. Um, the kids dress as if they're 100 years old. Staff does that as well. So all of that also is tied into the PBIS um, program. And the kids love it. The kids enjoy that. And the teachers don't have to buy it either. Right. This year, we're getting Christmas socks for the kids, so we're really excited about that. Um, some of the other things that we've done, uh, subway gift certificates, um, tickets to the Wizard of Oz. This was our one of the school play, um, and uh, students won um, some tickets for that. Uh, the carnival, uh, that, that's a big deal uh, in our school. It's, it's over multiple days, and there's all kinds of... Um, fun games and activities at Bounce House. Oh boy, Ac yeah, the activity kind of thing. Yeah, the cookies, popcorn, Italian ice. There's, there's a lot happening with the carnival and um, it really takes a lot of planning <laughs> and drives us crazy, but the kids love it. Um, but one of the ways that they can earn tickets to spend at carnival is uh, is through PBIS as well as like good attendance, AR points, you know, some other things. Do you want to? And we something? do it at the end of the year because you're wiped, we're wiped, they're wiped. 
So we try to do it for another incentive because, okay, Christmas is coming up, that's great. But then towards the end of the school, they're like done. And so having to look forward to a carnival also helps to keep them on track and not do the misbehaviors and make sure that we're doing the three Bs. So earning tickets for their carnival always helps. We're always looking for new things to do to keep them on track. We also ask students when we do our annual PBIS surveys, we do one for staff, one for students. Of course, we're all doing like either the TFI or the BOQ and um, you know, kind of all of the different surveys that we're doing and um, program um, evaluations. Uh, so we do ask the students, you know, things that they want to earn, um, rewards that they would like, and um, things that they think would be fun. Uh, we do end of the year uh, theme days, um, you know, wear sunglasses or crazy socks or, um, yes, A to Z. Um, is it is every day is a different theme um, with that letter of course dojo points no homework passes pajama days extra recess just some of the the typical ones that I'm sure you're all doing but uh, we wanted to throw those in of course as part of what we're doing to renew students so um, we want to hear from you turn and talk how are you renewing students just one minute and then we're gonna bring everybody back together Okay, so who wants to share? What is the way that you're renewing students? We're just going to take one comment now and then we'll talk if we have extra time at the end. So what is one way you're renewing students? Yes, back there. We use our PBIS funds and each teacher um, will get $100 to purchase um, things for your class to school. So we're every teacher has their own class store and then the students cash in their points. You can do it weekly, you can do it monthly, whatever works individually for the classroom. Great. Okay. So each teacher gets money to replenish their, their, uh, their school store. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Okay. So teachers, what about the teachers? How can we renew them? Because I don't know if you're feeling like I am, but I feel like I need some renewal already this school year. Um, so, uh, one of the favorite ways in our district, maybe we just like sweets, but um, cake is a big, <laughs> is a great way to uh, lift everybody's spirits. So when we do have the funds available to buy a sheet cake or a half a sheet cake, that is a super popular one right there. Um, we did bring in a food truck uh, as well. Uh, everybody had to buy their own um, food but it was something interesting and, uh, you know, something that we, we did it a couple times. Uh, however, um, the problem with bringing in the food truck when you are in a small town is that then there became all this buzz about, well, how come you invited this food truck that week and how come that food truck wasn't invited? And um, eventually we had to stop because some of the local businesses kind of were offended that their food truck wasn't invited, but it was more just like we're looking for who is available and who can provide food. Um, something else that was interesting with one of the food trucks is they had, we had it set up right outside our building and the teachers are going in and out and getting food and some of the communities started coming to the food truck um, and they had only prepared for the amount of you know, we had said like, okay, well, we're expecting, you know, about 40 people or 50 people to buy food. And so then they ran out because, <laughs> because some of the community started to come to the food truck. So <laughs> it, that was an interesting road. But I, I mean, a lot of us really loved the food truck. But between the controversy of, um, of, of who was invited or not invited, which there was no favoritism there, we were just, that was just the accusation and the community um, also getting involved. It was interesting. Um, monthly potlucks, that's a, you know, a great way for us to um, all get together and everybody's bringing in food and, and enjoy. Um, so we enjoy the, the potlucks. Uh, we took a, a bit of a hiatus from those during COVID because, you know, germs and food and things like that. But uh, mailbox surprises. That is just a way for us to kind of put something special in teachers' mailboxes, teacher and staff, with what they 
something fun that they might want. Um, I know we've put fortune cookies uh, around Chinese New Year, um, or candy, or uh, you know Hershey Kiss. I don't know different things um, to just say to staff, we appreciate you. Uh, something fun that we did was a comedian night out, and this was um, a comedian that was specifically for educators, uh, and he came to our area, and uh, we all went to, um, you know, have dinner and drinks before the show, and then we all went to the show together, and uh, people really liked that, and it was especially, you know, relevant because, it, you know, he was, he was a teacher, and... Um, you know, had a lot of uh, really entertaining things to say, so it, it was a great night. Water cooler in the teacher's lounge, or just, um, you know, people participating in that and, uh, you know, giving some, uh, contribute, contributing to, to pay for the water cooler. Dress down passes. Uh, we try and do some dress downs throughout the school year to keep, to keep uh, teachers and staff renewed because that lifts everybody's spirits when you're able to dress down. Uh, one, of, one of my personal favorites is the lunch special. Um, and this is something that one of our Title I reading teachers who is on our PBIS committee, she sort of just invented, uh, going back to the days, I think a lot of us when we were in school, um, you would get like pizza salad and a cookie um, as, as your, your lunch. So she was like, let's bring that back. Let's just have like pizza salad and a cookie. And, um, you know, we'll do that on Act 80 days when there's not really enough time to leave the building. But, you know, you want to you wanna have something different for lunch or even just like a Friday lunch. So several times a year, we'll just pay like, what, $6 for pizza salad and a cookie for, for the staff. Um, and the, um, the, the breakfasts. They're pretty special. I don't know if you want to talk about those at all, the, uh, the staff breakfasts that we do a couple times, once or twice a year. We set up in the teacher's lounge and make it a little more like a cafe. We have a little coffee bar, um, different types of creamers, bagels, um, danishes, tea. So it's a little bit, we kind of zhuzh it up, if you will. Um, and it's something that when everybody walks in in the morning, you know how you're looking for a coffee, it's a nice surprise. We usually don't tell the staff that we're doing it. So it is one of the favorite things, um, but that is one of the things that people do look forward to. And that's one of the questions they'll ask. Are we gonna do that again? Are we gonna have coffee and bagels again? It, and there have been some of the staff volunteering to do um, like quiches and things like that. Totally voluntary, but it is nice, kind of like potluck kind of thing. Cool. While you're still there, um, this is on the next slide, but pictured is our teacher appreciation cart. Please talk about that. Oh, the cart was one of the favorite things too. That was new. I don't know where I probably found it on Pinterest. That you just take an old TV cart or utility cart, like you see in the picture there, and you put in treats that um, staff would like. I mean, there are some people that are, you know, I don't. They stay away from certain types of products or certain kinds of food. So we made sure to cover everybody. That we had water, soda. Um, different kind of non-carbonated beverages for them and different kinds of treats. As we walk through the building during the day, usually right around, I don't know, mid-afternoon, and knock down the door as a surprise and let them pick out a drink and a snack um, it, of their own liking. So they did, really did enjoy that. That was another surprise. They didn't know it was coming. So again, it was a, that's another big hit. Um, sometimes it can get into a, you know, I don't like that, or there wasn't something that I like. But again, you can add things to the cart and make it a little bit more personal for your staff. But that is a big hit. Both of those um, are really big hits with the staff. Mm -hmm. OK, we also do raffles, um, coffee and a special breakfast. Just um, you know, surprise, that's um, available. Uh, Birthday dress down coupons. This one was a big hit with the staff. Um, so, the beginning of January, you get a dress down coupon for your birthday or whatever day you choose to use it. So, that if it falls, you know, in the summer or on a weekend, um, it doesn't matter. You just use that coupon once a year. So, I'll be getting ready to print up the ones for 2024 soon. Um, and then you just turn it into the principal on the day that you're using it. 
uh, lunch orders, we try to get together as a staff. Um, our our school secretary, you know, she, she she's like an honorary member of the PBIS team because even though she, um, some may describe her as uh, Kurt, uh, <laughs> she um, she also has a really big heart and loves. Uh, to support her teachers, please tell her that part. And, um, and, and she really is a wonderful person with a very warm heart. And uh, she will coordinate the lunch orders and really you know, be sure that, oh, did you see that the lunch order is out? And did you, did you put in your order and remind everybody so that uh, everybody can participate? So um, if we didn't have somebody to kind of coordinate that, you know, it would be a lot harder when it's falling on, on someone else. Yeah, she is like the building mom. That's a good way to put it. Um, Secret Santa. We do um, a fun Secret Santa uh, right around, you know, the holidays. And uh, you guys probably do something similar, but we have staff fill out, you know, a, a paper that has, you know, what they like, what they don't like, um, things they collect, things that um, they're interested in, and hobbies, so that you can, and then you pick one out and... We do it for a whole week, um, and it's you put the you know find the person either in their mailbox or you know in their in their room and give them a little treat that's just like you know a dollar or two, um, and then the, on the last day it's five dollars or a little more depending on you know, but on who you get yeah basically, <laughs> um, and uh, we do a holiday dinner. Um, both we, you know, order the school holiday dinner, and then we also plan a holiday dinner where we go out um, and uh, go after school. The popcorn bar, does somebody want to talk about that? So our local um, movie theater gives us free popcorn for everything. If you come and you pick it up, you can call and see if they'll allow you to do that. You don't have to pay for any of it. And we had a popcorn party for the kids throughout the whole, the whole building. We had leftover, so we set up what's called the popcorn bar into the teacher's lounge, and we, they got to scoop out however much they wanted and add toppings. And we had like chocolate, and they had, um, what was it, ranch sprinkle and cheese and all kinds of things that they could do just so that way we show appreciation for them. Because don't forget, we're doing a lot for the kids. We have to remember we take care of ourselves too. So we try to keep the flow going for us as well. Uh, the teacher appreciation cart we already talked about, um, teacher of the month staff parking, and refresh this, the teacher's lounge. That's something that we want to do and we haven't done yet, but so we're excited. <laughs> or a comfy chair. We're, it's, it's in process. We've done some funny, um, some funny signs and um, some inspirational signs, so we're trying to get it to be less dour in there and less depressing. So... Yes, certainly we'll take any, <laughs> any donations. <laughs> um, okay, so turn and talk. We want to hear from you. This will be just a minute. How are you re renewing teachers? And then we'll have someone share and keep moving. Um, so let's bring it back. Um, can we have one person share? How are you renewing teachers? And we'll take anybody um, at the end if we have time. Uh, please. Um, I am Elementary Library Media Specialist at Toronto Park, um, and we have a really awesome principal who always has new ideas for every holiday, every special event, um, and we just did a staff Halloween exchange. Um, so, you know, it started, we thought maybe 20 people would sign up, we had maybe 50, 55, um, and it was just really nice to see all the baskets. So um, we, we do a lot. Um, my favorite is staff Olympics. Now we have teacher, teacher appreciation week. We had a different Olympics every morning. So we did office chair curling. And just uh, we had a big, um, we got medals and things like that. So I think getting like teachers together because we're so busy during the day, just seeing each other in the morning just really starts our days off really well. We have something in common. We only thought there was be 20 people here. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. Staff Olympics and Halloween Exchange, that's amazing. Thank you. Okay, so moving on. 
But wait, how are we going to pay for this? I know that's what's probably echoing in your mind because certainly I don't know how, sometimes I, I don't know how still we're paying for things. But uh, so here we go. Fundraising that we do for programs and rewards for students. Um, the Pura Vida bracelets, I don't know if you want to talk about that, that you did a really great job with that one. So we had the, the we contacted Pure Vita. I think they sold it to us for like two bucks a, a bracelet. They made it in our school colors. We were able to get sell them for five ten dollars and made a huge profit off of it. They'll they'll ship it right to you. You just contact them. Tell me tell them how many. We had leftover. We took them to the football game to sell. We brought them on parent teacher conference night. Even if we had leftover extras, it all helped. Uh, Krispy Kreme, that's big near us, and um, we have a huge Krispy Kreme fundraiser, and we really streamlined it to make it easy where they just pick it up on parent conferences. Um, so that is by far our biggest fundraiser and how we're paying for things like Christmas gifts um, and end-of-the-year gifts for, for each student. Uh, during COVID, we sold masks that uh, were on, you know, like made with our school slogan or uh, logo. Um, we have the uh, Wilkes Barre Scranton Real Riders, which is the farm team for the Yankees, um, and uh, we have, you know, done trips with to the Real Riders and um, bake sales, basket raffles, selling sweatshirts or any sort of school gear is always, you know, something that is is fun and people want to be involved with that, and of course, you know, make some money as well. Car magnets. Um, this is one that we have explored, but we haven't uh, put into place yet, but. Uh, we think it would be a lot of fun uh, to make a car magnet and sell that for PBIS. We also ask for donations when we have the community coming in, which is typically Grandparents' Day and Halloween. Um, so uh, in, when they're arriving and leaving, we have kids uh, out with the buckets for, <laughs> for donations. Um, and yes, uh-huh. And... Um, Pizza sales. Um, where we live, pizza is a big deal. Um, it, we even have our own style of pizza in Northeast Pennsylvania called Old Forge style. So if you've never had it, you know, you should check it out. But it is delicious and pizza is a big deal. Okay. So we also fundraise for what we're going to spend money for, for teachers. And we keep that separate because that's uh, how it is in our school to make sure that. Um, the kids aren't just doing a bunch of fundraisers and then the teachers get to just do something fun with it. <laughs> um, so uh, a big seller was the, um, the teacher or Inspire shirts um, that uh, you see pictured with that Sue has on there, um, the sort of friends theme. I'll be there for you. Um, we've done some basket raffles for teachers and um, bake sales, selling sweatshirts and gear just for staff. Uh, we do some raffles as well, um, wreaths and also other things, gift cards, and those are through the, our school secretary that we mentioned, um, the building mom. She, uh, she'll come in and she'll be really excited and she'll be like, oh, I have another wreath that I found and don't tell anybody it's from me, but let's raffle it off. And she does this several times a year and, uh, you know, it's just, she's, she's so sweet to, uh, to kind of keep that going and help us to fundraise. Um, local pizza seals again um, for the teachers um, we have a bakery in our town that is very popular and everybody loves it people come from you know around the surrounding places that's to sanitary bakery, sanitary yes. bakery. that's sanitary. right mm -hmm. yes and um, so it's, it's known and uh, people will get a lot of treats from there but they also have pizza did you we're working on a sweatshirt this year we want to do the top 10 songs of Kennedy like welcome to the jungle you know, like a mixtape thing. Our, our staff loves gear, um, and we just did away with hoods, which is awful because all of our stuff has hoods on it. I cut mine off. So um, <laughs> we're gonna, we do a lot of sweatshirts. We're going to do the half zips and things like that. We try to find what they like to do. We ask around, you know, what they would like. They end up paying for their own stuff anyway. So. Okay, and um, then we also have done coin, coin drives and um, t basketball teacher versus students. You know, maybe the, um, the ticket sales go to, uh, the proceeds go to, this uh, to the students and refreshments to the teachers. So 
any, any ways that we can find to fundraise for teachers um, and so that we can pay for some things to keep people renewed. We really try to do it um, because it, it, the, the school year is exhausting and trying to, to, to do everything can be um, daunting and uh, it takes a lot out of people. So anything we can do to keep people feeling not terrible about school, you know, we try to do that. Okay, so we are not going to turn and talk about how you're fundraising, but we are going to take questions. So I saw that you had one. Um, how much do we charge? Was it five? I think five we charged for the, the basketball game, teacher versus students. Um, yes? When you said they did wear a hood, like, can they literally not wear a sweatshirt with a hood? We are not allowed to wear a hood at all, not even the staff. But you can wear it to school, but you have to take it off um, when you get to school. You can't tuck it. Correct. No. No hoods. Uh huh. Yes, uh, the, that's what they decided. So that's new this year, and we're still getting used to it. <laughs> uh, any other questions or comments? Yes. Sorry, when you were talking about the class. How often does that get given, and how many do you need to get before you get like a class prize? So the class golden ticket can be given out to any uh, by any staff um, at any time. Sue's got it right there, and um, they're available in the office. So. I think she thinks that you get so many little golden tickets in order to get a big ticket. No. So when, how many? So could more than one class get that a day? As, yeah. As often as you see. Twenty-four. Yeah. As often as you see it happening. Absolutely. You can give every class you see in the hallway. I mean, how often? I don't know. I'm not in the hallway at all that often, but when I am, I keep a lookout because I I look out for my kids to get it as well. Like we have two, and the girl across the hall has four, and my kids are like. When are we getting, there are times my kids truly deserve it. We typically don't give our own classes one, but I, I carry them around sometimes with me because mm -hmm. then I can do it yeah, like instantly. I do too. Mm -hmm. We also too, like if Sue's class has been really bad for her for like, I don't know, for the week. But they're really trying today to walk in the hallway and she'll say, you know, Mrs. Duda, they're really trying really hard. And I'll look for something to give to them and say, wow, you guys are doing a really good job. It also boosts the golden ticket as well. So, I mean, we help each other out, especially if you have a rough, gra like rough group. We try to help one another as much as we can. Now, when it starts to get up there, now you're, you're talking more well. Because, I mean, we're not easy as giving it out, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you can give them as often as you want. Yeah. And then when is the prize? Like, usually, whenever you want to give them. Usually it's after, a, after the, it's the teacher's discretion. So if my class wins one, I can say, well, we're going to, if it's pajama day, I'm going to look at the weather and say, okay, we're going to do it on this day and, we'll, you know, let parents know. If it's something like a movie, it could be immediate or it could be, you know, at the end of the weekend. If you have any more questions, you can come up and talk with the team. Please give them a round of applause.